Hey, welcome to Draft Academy. My name is Mike. In this tutorial, I want to talk to you guys about instance methods in Ruby. Now, sometimes you'll hear people call these instance methods. Uh, you'll also hear people call them object methods. Sometimes you'll even call them class methods. Essentially, what we're going to do is we're going to come inside of a class that we create in Ruby and we're going to give it some methods. And then when we're using objects of that class, we can access those methods to get information about our objects. So I want to show you guys my setup over here. I actually have a class here called student. And this class is basically just modeling or it's acting as a blueprint or a template for a student in our program. Essentially, we created like a student data type. So I defined the attributes for a student to be name, major, and GPA. And down here we have this initialize method. So we're passing it a name, a major, and a GPA. And we're setting the attributes of this student object of an individual student object to be equal to what gets passed in. So this is like our student class. And down here I'm creating two student objects. So we're making one, his name is Jim, he's studying business. He has a GPA of 2.6. Then we have Pam who's studying art and her GPA is 3.6. So these are student one and student two. Now imagine that for each of the students in our program, we wanted to be able to figure out if they had honors or not. So imagine you're writing a program for a college or university, and you wanted to be able to figure out whether or not a particular student had honors. Let's say that the rules for honors would were constantly changing, right? So one day maybe you had honors if you had a GPA over 3.5, and maybe then they you know would change it to be like 3.3. In other words, like imagine if we wanted to be able to find out which students had honors and which didn't. Well, we can actually write a method inside of our student class, and then that method will be able to tell us whether or not a specific object has honors. So I'm gonna show you guys how to do that. Over here in our class, I'm just gonna come down here below this initialize method, and we can actually create a method of our own. So I'm gonna go ahead and define a method, and I'm just gonna call this has honors. And this method is not going to take in any information. So we're not going to need open and closed parentheses. And down here, we're just going to end it off. So this has honors method is basically going to return either true or false. If the current student, if the object that's calling this method has honors, it'll return true. If they don't, it's going to return false. So how can we figure out if the student has honors? Well, we could use an if statement. So I could say if I want to check to see if the student's GPA is greater than or equal to a specific number. So what I can do is I can actually access the GPA attribute inside of our student object and use it here. So I could say if at GPA is greater than or equal to, and let's say that in order to have honors, we, we have to have a 3.5 or above. So if their GPA is greater than or equal to 3.5, then we're going to return true. Otherwise, we're just going to return false. So this is basically our method. If the GPA is greater than 3.5, we return true. Otherwise, we return false. So now what I can actually do is I can use this has honors method on each one of my student objects. So I could come down here and you see I've created these two students, right? Pam and Jim. If I wanted, I could print out whether or not they have honors. So I could say puts and let's check to see if student one, which is Jim, has honors. So I could say student one dot has honors. And when I run this, it's going to print out whether or not he has honors. So in our case, it's going to be false. But if I ran this method on student two, so if I ran this method on Pam, Pam actually does have honors because she has a 3.6. So now this is going to return true. And what I want to point out is this has honors method is going to be different depend or it's going to be using different information depending on what object is calling it, right? So when student one, when Jim is calling this object, Jim has a GPA less than 3.5. So it's going to return false for Jim. So for the Jim object, for the Jim instance, it's going to return false. But for the Pam object, Pam's GPA is higher than 3.5. So it's going to return true. We can basically define a method that can be used on all of the objects for our specific class. And we can do it using something like this. So you can define as many of these as you want inside of your class. And these can be really useful. A lot of good classes out there in Ruby are going to have a bunch of good methods like this, which are going to allow you to, you know, either find out information about the specific object 
or you know modify the object or do something to the object in some way shape or form so that can be really useful and just consider you know writing some methods inside of your classes when they're appropriate this is a good example of you know where a method can come in handy because it can tell us whether or not the student has honors it can tell us something about the student using the attributes using the information that we've stored about that object hey thanks for watching if you enjoyed the video please leave a like and subscribe to draft academy to be the first to know when we release new content also, we're always looking to improve, so if you have any constructive criticism or questions or anything, leave a comment below. Finally, if you're enjoying Draft Academy and you want to help us grow, head over to draftacademy.com forward slash contribute and invest in our future.